Hello, this um, is going to be a little video to teach you how to do the very basics on EDAMS. Um, we are going to do an answer sheet on EDAMS. That way we can uh, upload a test if we'd like, but ultimately uh, print out Scantrons um, and then the uh, Scantrons with the barcode that you can just run through the scanner. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to log into Edoms. Um, I have it saved here on my favorites. However, if you don't have it saved yet, you just go on the DOM page. Um, you go into under Staff, Tools, and Edoms. Um, I'm already logged in because I automatically saved it since this is my personal computer. But if I use it in the copy room, um, I just have to log in. Um, what you want to do is you want to create a test. You can hit create a test here or you could go under testing and hit create test. Um, this is usually um, defaulted just fine so you don't have to change any of that. Um, unless you have site access it will say teacher test which is fine. Any of those will work. Um, Default standard set, uh, since this is the most basic version of creating an EDEMS test, I, I'm not going to be going through the standards. I'm not going to be assigning standards um, to this particular test. Um, I can make a separate video on teaching you how to just do the standards. So for now, we're going to just leave that as um, no standards. So we do have to change it to no standards. This one automatically changes to no standards. And this one defaults to kindergarten. So let's go ahead and change it to no standards. That way, um, the word kindergarten will print out onto your student's test. And we don't want that. So no standard, no standard address, no standard address. The next thing is test name. Um, you can name your test whatever you'd like. I would say um, kind of start some kind of pattern that way you can recognize tests um, when you need to look for them later. Uh, my pattern is I start by the level of my class. So level two because I teach Spanish two or you can do um, like ninth grade whatever it is um, and then I do the chapter that I'm testing um, and then you could do the year um, for this, I will put um, video demo. That way I, I know it's not a real test. Um, and then here is just a short version of this test name. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You, the only thing is that you have 30 characters or less. Um, this one I always just change it to print only. I'm only giving my test on a printer version. My students are not going to be taking it um, on the computer, not yet at least. So I'm just going to hit to print only. And lastly, uh, I'm ready to create my test. So here is where um, you start from the bottom down, from the top down. <laughs> Um, you start where it says how many questions. So this is how many total questions you have on your test. What I like to do is I like to have a like a mischief um, answer key like on a scrap piece of paper. So then I could just copy down that information um, as I to my test here. It just makes it easier for me, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so you just put the number of questions here. Let's say I have six questions. You know, this could be a short quiz. Um, some of my tests are as long as 30 questions, 40 questions, so um, it doesn't really matter how many you put here. And then you hit generate. The reason why I say if you have a long test, like if it's one of my tests with 40 questions, um, it's happened to me where I'm almost done or halfway done um, and this screen um, like erases, it doesn't save my information and I have to start all over. So once you've gen you've generated your test, you have this um, button here, save way at the bottom. Save your work um, as you go along or else you will, um, you might lose it. Sorry, it's just the Wi-Fi here. Um, so just make sure that you just hit save. Since I have six questions and I hit generate down here, you will see my six questions. Now by default, it makes all of my questions um, a, B, C, D. Those are my multiple choices. Now, not all of my questions necessarily have to be A, B, C, D. If you want to change that, you have all these options to change it. So you can do all these. Um, 
So for example, if I want questions one, two, and three different, I do have to select them here. And then I go up here, I, I choose what I want them. So let's say I want those to be true or false questions. I just have to hit apply to select it. Remember, you do have to select the questions first and then go back, change it, and apply to select it. Once you do that, you could see one, two, and three are true and false. The rest were left alone. Um, if I just want to change four, let's say four is just more options, uh, all those options for four. Apply to selected. I look at it here. I see that it has all those options. So it's been a while since I've saved, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Um, and then I'm just going to leave five and six as they are A, B, C, D. Um, I'm not going to get into the standards here uh, because this is going to be a very basic video, um, but this is where you would assign standards to each question. Um, you can also assign a skill area to each question. Um, I will show you how to do that at, in a later video. So for now, we're going to skip that. And this is where you're making your answer sheet. So this is where you would click what the correct answer is. This is where there's more um, room for human error. So this is where you have to make sure that you're clicking on the correct answer. Because if you accidentally click on the wrong one and then you have all your kids take the tests, you're going to have that, you know, that bad question in there. So make sure that you're, you're careful. So let's just, you just select the correct answer for each. That's why I like to have that scratch piece of paper so I can be comparing it to, to what my answers should be. And then I always go back. I check them all one by one. I hit save. If it's a long test, I'll check it again. Once you're done here, you just hit finish. Once you hit finish, you get to this um, new screen. Now this is still a draft. Your test is not made. Um, this is where if you want to upload the actual test to EDEMS, you can go ahead and upload it here. You just hit upload. You hit select, just like you would upload any other doc. So you look through your things, you find your PDF. Your test does have to be in PDF format, so make sure that you, you save it in PDF format. You just hit select, and then it'll be here. I, I'll do a PDF. Let's see. This is a PDF. I'll just hit that. And then you hit upload booklet. Um, it gives you this warning, but everything's fine. So now your test is there if you want it. I don't want it there, so I'm going to delete it, but that's how you get your test up there. Next, what you're going to do is, if you're sure that everything is correct, you're going to finalize your test. Once you finalize it, you cannot go back and change your answers. So make sure that you've double, triple checked everything. So you're going to finalize. See, it warns you here, and you say, okay, I don't need to edit it anymore. Get to this screen. This screen, you have to schedule the test. So you have to hit the green button. Administration date. Um, see, it says, please note administration date. Give it a date-like name. I always put semester one, blah, 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 or whatever. You could do spring, fall, whatever you want. Start date. Now, this is where um, you want to put today's date. You cannot print the test material until this start date. I've made the, the mistake of saying, hey, well, I'm not going to give the test till next Monday, so that will be my start date. No, just go ahead and give it today's. Just rule of thumb, start date is today's date. So we'll hit today's date. End date, you are going to hit whenever the end of it is. I'm not really sure um, if it closes, you can print, whatever it may be. So what I always do, I was taught, just give it five years from now. You probably won't need it, so here you go, 2021. Today's date, five years from now. By default, this is scan sheet. That's exactly what I want. I don't have to change anything there, and then I just hit save. Okay, very important step right here. Who can print or administer this test? 
If you're going to be sharing this test with your colleagues, you have to change this. Right now, only I can print this test, give this test. So if you change this, right, right here it says access level, no sharing, change it to teacher. If you change it to teacher, any teacher on campus will be able to print out and administer this test. Hit save. Teacher level users, that's perfect. Now you are done. See where it says test ID here? This is the number you want to write down, this number here. This is easy to, to find. If you, if you need to give it to another colleague, say, hey, I've made the test, the so chapter test for chapter um, 1B, here's the number. All they have to do is um, type in this number and they'll be able to find it. Okay. So you're done making the answer sheet. Now you just need to print the scantrons. You can easily just go here, print materials. You want to print the scan sheets. Here you have two options. You have pre-ID sheets and generic sheets. You definitely want the pre-ID sheets. Um, pre-ID sheets are the ones with the barcode and the student's name and the student's ID. The generic sheet is the one where all this is blank. I like to print all of the pre-ID sheets and a few generic sheets, especially at the beginning of the semester. For some reason, Edom's uh, lags a little bit on updating your roster. So if you have a few students or even one student that was added to your class, then Edom's won't have a pre-ID sheet for that student. So you always want to have a few generic sheets handy. So first, let's just leave it at pre-ID sheet. Hit next. You want all your kids that are currently enrolled, obviously at a rancho. If you want a specific grade, but usually this, this is just left fine. Um, I want all my kids in every grade. Um, I have mixed grades in my classes. And then course. Um, if you don't have site access, this is actually easier because your drop down will only be your classes. For me here, my drop down is all of the classes offered at El Rancho High School, so I'm gonna have to hunt through this to find my class. Oh, here it is, Spanish 2A. And then what period do you wanna print? Do you wanna print all your periods or do you wanna print just one period? I usually just like to print all my periods at once and then I'm going to pick my name here from who teaches that. Um, here you go. And then you just hit generate scan sheet. You will see the uh, PDF here. And see what I mean by it has the student's name, it has the barcode, it has um, everything. And it also, it's, 100, it's all my students, all 146 of them in alphabetical order. So first I'll have all my period ones in alphabetical order, all my periods two, so on and so forth. So it makes it easy for me to know, to hand it out. Also, here's my test ID number. That same number that we talked about earlier. Okay, so now if I'm here, right? All I do is I hit the back button and it takes me back to the screen so I'm gonna hit generic because again I want those extra sheets just in case somebody was added last minute I don't want any surprises the day of the tests so here are here's one of them see how it's generic it has no student ID no nothing just the test um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print about two three of them um, just to have handy just in case um, so one of my students uh, pre-ID doesn't, doesn't print out. Once I'm done with that, I am done with this test. I, I don't need to do anything else. I'm done. I have all my, my scantrons um, printed out. I just have to give them the tests and then I just have to go into the copy room and I just have to hit the Edom's icon, scan, um, and put all the papers facing down on that scanner and it's gonna grade all of my tests. Um, let me go ahead and show you how to print your tests out a little bit in a different way. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Edom's home. Now we're gonna say, hey, um, my colleague gave me that, that 
that test number, this test number here. Um, my colleague gave me that test number and told me, okay, it's ready for you to print. So you're going to go into testing, print test material. Okay, this is if you just want to print. You already know that somebody created the test or you've created the tests. You take that number and you paste it here. You hit search and you'll find it. Now, your colleague will only find it if you changed the it to teacher level users. So we've done that so my colleague will be able to find it. And you just hit print and here you go, scan sheets, print, and there you go. Now we're back to this one where you print all of these and a few of these. And that's it. Hopefully this was helpful.